You mentioned genetics a little bit earlier. Isn't it true that we're finding out that fewer and fewer cancers are really genetic and more happens to be just what the environment is around us? I mean, if, if your parents had it, you oftentimes follow the same patterns that your parents did. And, you know, we initially think that's genetic, but that's probably not necessarily the case. So a guy walks up to me and he says, my grandfather died of a heart attack when he was 40 years old. My dad died of a heart attack when he was 39 years old. I'm going to die of a heart attack by the time I'm 40. And I look at him and he weighs 350 pounds and he has been, he has been eating all the wrong things and living the same lifestyle that his dad and his grandfather had lived. That's not to say that there's not in some cases something genetically awry, because we know that happens on occasion. But again, it's a matter of, uh, it's a matter of the epigenetics. How do you live? We t everyone talks about Angelina Jolie, you know, carrying the, the BRCA1. So she had, her, um, she had her both breasts removed. She had her ovaries removed, I believe. And with the, with the idea that somehow that would prevent her from getting cancer, we know that that's false. We see women who've had uh, bilateral, bilateral mastectomies getting cancer in their reconstructed breasts. And so that's not the solution, and it's, it's never been the solution. So genetics may be a player and a factor, and most people agree, in maybe up to 5% of cancers, give or take a percent or two. But again, it depends on how you live your life. And if you're gonna live a life of um, a wildlife that, that pummels your body with, with chemicals and, and radiation and, and things of that nature, that 5% genetic predisposition is going to, uh, it's gonna play in, in your life as you move forward. On the other hand, if you live a life where you eat mostly the right foods, you exercise, you detox your body, you take supplementation, the chance of those uh, genetic predispositions um, exposing themselves are very, very minute. So it's really a cop-out to say, you carry that gene, it's defective, you're gonna get cancer. It's another thing that comes from uh, modern medicine. Angelina Jolie, I believe, was told that she, you know, was um, 80% a chance of getting breast cancer. And, and that was a lie to begin with because it's based on a bell curve. And they put her right at the top and they said, that's you. That's, and, it, and it wasn't true. And so we have to be very careful when we listen to uh, genetics and, and the Human Genome Project, which was, you, you talk to the guys that were involved with that and they say it's largely a fraud. And um, I'll, let, I'll let all your listeners do their own home study on that. But I wrote about it in my book, oh, incidentally, Killing Cancer Not People, on our website, uh, AmericanACI.org. But uh, we write about that because it's important for people to know that, and it's important for them to know what part genetic plays, which is ge uh, genetics play, which is very minute, but what part epigenetics plays, and, and that's major. But that's something we can control ourselves, and, and so it's very important. We can't control our genes or what we're given to begin with, but we can control if, um, if genes are, um, are exposed and, and uh, allowed to, um, to hurt us. You know, and it's possible, but uh, it's not probable if you do the right things.